These dogs are barking, so I'm gonna give them a little rest. <laughs> what the flip is up, YouTube? Welcome to Cinematic YouTube with Eric. <laughs> we need more vibes, Gene. We do need more vibes. You saw that I announced a few weeks ago, about a month ago, that I am shooting a documentary with the Joe Greer. He's a film photographer, street photographer, based out of Nashville area, and just a legend in the space. But he's also a marathon runner, similar to myself. Uh, we share that hobby. This year, we're going to be documenting the process of him trying to attempt a two hour and 40 minute marathon or faster. And to put that in perspective, that is a six minute and six second mile pace over 26.2 miles or 347 per kilometer. It's fast. <laughs> It's very fast. Today I'm gonna to break down the first interview we did with him, how we shot it technically, as well as all of the gear that we're using to document this whole thing. All right, Eric from a month ago with a sinus infection, take it away. All right, so basic setup here is we have C200 on sticks on a tripod and a 90 millimeter Leica vintage lens. It's EF mount, so it can be put on the C200, which is also EF mount. More of a vintage look, uh, has more characteristics uh, interesting characteristics than like a typical EFL lens and it's a deep click aperture which is pretty cool set up. Set up. Joe's sitting over here for interview and we have a 4x4 four four, uh, foot grid uh, double diffused with a 300x aperture 300x going into that it's about a half power so that's our key light coming in we thought about doing other lights but I really just love the drama of the one key light coming in um, and we have a negative flag on this side, so we have shadow side uh, from the camera going right into the shadow side right here. So Steven's standing by the negative flag, and Joe's gonna be talking to me over on the right. So I really wanna, like, as I interview him throughout the film, I really want him to be facing right a lot. And the, the idea I actually left. have is then left after the race. So, like, you're looking, mm. like, it's almost like you're looking towards the race, and then thinking back, you're looking left. Nice. Um, so we had a hair light set up over here. Um, but I just didn't like how manufactured it looked. So we have another uh, negative flag in the back. That's, a, that's four feet by four feet. And that's just acting as a backdrop because we're on a 90 mil lens. It's a super 35 sensor. So it's like probably 120 millimeter look. So it's really tight, really dramatic. And that's the setup. Great. You ready, brother? I'm ready. All right, man, who are you? My name is Joe Greer. Things I think we've been doing really well so far. We've gotten to know Joe and his story super well. Diving into conversation, having dinners, having meals together, and really picking apart what his past is and what his story is. He gifted me his memoir, the book that he is releasing next month, which is The Lay of the Land, and it tells his life story up to this point. And he has a lot of trauma in his past and just like a really crazy story. I didn't realize how much of that story we're gonna be incorporating into this documentary, but I realized very quickly that if we're going to tell this story justice, we're going to need to incorporate some of those elements. So I think we've done a really good job of digging so far and figuring all that stuff out. And I really feel like my history in weddings has really helped me in that process as well, which is pretty cool to see. We have been shooting for coverage, so that's good and a bad thing. I think it's good because we have a lot of footage to work with. We've been shooting every angle, two angles, tons of lenses, all sorts of different stuff, but it does feel like we're kind of roaming. We're getting the hype going online. I've been posting stills on Instagram and Twitter and people have been retweeting it to oblivion and commenting like crazy and I'm interacting with people I really never thought I'd be interacting with in the creative space, both photography and filmmaking, which is just super cool and I think it's going to help benefit us later when it comes to bringing this to the masses once it's done. It's been really cool to see how I'm interacting with more people in the filmmaking space with rentals and um, just having more conversations about this project. So, community. 
Some things I need to work on, I think I need to have a more clear direction about the visuals and the storytelling pieces. So I want to start honing in on what I want those to be within the story structure and storyboarding what I want those visuals to look like because I think it could be incredibly compelling to have those as transition pieces throughout the film with real life documentary style coverage. I could also do a much better job on file management. Uh, we're shooting in RAW for most of this, so I bought four 14 terabyte towers at b &H for 800 bucks total is a crazy steal. Uh, I jumped on that right away because I knew we were gonna have so much data this year. So I've been backing up to two of those and making sure I have redundancy, but it can get sloppy at times and I'm gonna have to start figuring out how I want to do that in the editing process, whether it be transcoding or building proxies or whatever that is, just start wrapping my mind around that structure so I don't lose anything. Finally, I want to keep testing out new techniques and new gear that we want to use um, on site. Checking out rollerblades, <laughs> getting some new rollerblades again. I had a really cool interaction with Ryan Booth on Twitter, who's a crazy talented DP from New York. He was talking about how he's using rollerblades, uh, filming a runner might even want to help us out with this project, which is super cool, even that that's a possibility right now. I also want to get the Ronin out, get a stabilizer out. I normally don't like using a gimbal, but with all the shake that's happening in this footage, I think there's going to be times when I want something that's really smooth as well, so figuring out how that's going to work. Finally, I want to buy a C70. I really feel like it's going to be the perfect marriage between the C200 and the R5 with the Log2 10-bit 4K you could shoot on it, both just 10-bit and RAW. doesn't have IBIS like the R5 does, but it's just smaller, more compact, and it has that instead of having to shoot raw all the time. Plus just a multitude of other things that I just really like. I know I'm probably not gonna like the structure of the body very much, but kitting it out to feel like a cinema camera like the C200, I think is the move. And I'm gonna talk about all that gear, but first I do wanna thank our sponsor. Before you skip ahead, Musicbed has been there from the beginning with me. When I started filming and editing weddings, Musicbed was what I used for licensing almost a decade ago. And it's crazy that they're sponsoring my stuff now. And it's crazy that they're partnering with me in the BTS of this whole documentary and wanting to be a part of that process. So first off, Musicbed, thank you. Y'all are legends. I get emails like every other day from music and audio licensing companies trying to work with me and partner with me, but I turn all of them down because Musicbed is my favorite. Musicbed is my favorite because they have a multitude of music in every genre that could suit my needs for eliciting emotion in any scenario. It's super cool because Joe loves vintage everything, vintage clothes, vintage cameras, vintage whatever, music. <laughs> and so having a vintage catalog and a classical catalog is going to serve us so well in having music for this documentary for those specific scenes. I have a link in the description if you'd like to get a subscription. Um, you could use my code all caps Eric Floberg 22 If you're at all interested, go check it out. Thank you again, Musicbed, for sponsoring this video. On to gear, my favorite thing to talk about. Gear doesn't matter, right? It very much matters in this circumstance. <laughs> we're constantly moving, constantly shooting, so I have to be really intentional about what we're using for gear. The main bit of what we've been shooting, the core footage has been shot on the C200 in RAW, 4K RAW, 12-bit color, uh, but we've also been using the R5 as a B cam and shooting that 8K RAW, alternating between the 8K RAW and the 4K or 8K Log3 on the R5 and using IBIS from time to time on a longer focal length like the 50 RF that's on the camera that's filming me right now. It's the R5 filming me. I know the M1 Max that I just got can handle raw footage just straight out the box. It can edit it. I kind of, I usually have to lower the resolution in Premiere down to a quarter or a half resolution to get the playback right, but it can handle it. I just don't think it's gonna be able to handle it for with a multitude of terabytes and terabytes of footage when I piece all this together later. So I'm going to have to reckon with either building proxies or transcoding this footage to ProRes or something like that down the line. Lenses, we've been using Canon EF Prime lenses mostly and the 16 to 35 2.8. Reason for that is because it's native glass to the C200 and can autofocus really well and that's super important for someone who's moving all the time. We're just gonna have a much better hit rate with something like that than me trying to pull focus on camera or having a first AC with a monitor trying to pull focus for constant movement. Maybe there'll be a scene later where we use a vintage lens or a prime that doesn't have autofocus to get a different look when stuff slows down, but that's something we're gonna deal with in the future. On the R5, I've been using this 50 millimeter 1.2, it's the RF, crazy sharp, insane in the 8K footage. Um, gives me that tack sharp look I want um, when I'm shooting that super high resolution. For audio, I've been rocking the NTG4 Plus. 
this Rode mic on camera on the C200 straight into the XLR for scratch audio to get all of those sounds of birds chirping and city life and his footsteps and all sorts of ambient stuff that's important to um, bringing a viewer into the film. But we've also been using these Sony clip mics, their voice memos, I'll link them down in the description, either on his lapel or taped to his chest or with an elastic band around his chest underneath his shirt to get all of that breathing and anytime he wants to talk happen. to camera or talk to us while he's running or doing the workout. Unless these easy days are easy. We do want to invest in the tentacle time code, 32-bit uh, float recorders. They seem like an absolute dream. They'll sync up with the time code in the C200 and line up perfectly. And having 32-bit float audio is a way for you to basically have all your bases covered and make sure you're not too low or not peaking. It's the equivalent of having raw video, but in audio form, maybe even better. So that's what I have so far. It's super exciting. I hope you enjoyed the breakdown and the visuals. It's super exciting to bring this to you guys. I'm stoked to share the whole process of all of this and show you all the BTS throughout the year. Musicbed is partnering with us to show all this BTS. So I hope you enjoyed this first one and I hope you enjoy the process of seeing someone who is doing something like this who's never done it before and coming along people who are just incredibly talented and now rubbing shoulders with people who have done stuff like this before. So I hope it's really valuable to you. I hope it's really entertaining. And if you're at all interested in the breakdown of the financial part and the business part of all of this, I'm gonna be covering all that on my Patreon. It's just 10 bucks a month if you wanna sign up down in the description. No pressure there, just wanna let you know that that's an option. And that's all I have for you today. Like and subscribe and do that stuff because that's what you're supposed to say at the end of a YouTube video. And don't, if you don't want to, and just be nice. That's all I ask, it's just be nice. See you in the next BTS and be good, be, be well. Film, filmmaking vibes, filmmaking vibes. I gotta license this. This needs to be an NFT. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, you really gonna let me fill up this SD card? Uh, <laughs> I am so rocks. close to blocking you on social media. <laughs>